Good afternoon everybody, my name is Mr Manolis, so I teach at McKinnon Secondary College. Um, I have a little story to tell you, it started a long time ago. My mother went to Greece because my grandmother had um, suffered a stroke and um, when she came back she brought me Pythagoras and she's brought me back Pythagoras' cup. And I said to her, well, I soon realised that um, I was born on the same island as Pythagoras. I teach maths and science like Pythagoras. And there couldn't be that many people around in the world that are from Pythagoras' island, Samos, and teach mathematics. So anyway, I said to mum, well, what's the story about the cup? Where did it originate? What happened? And she said, well, Pythagoras was a great teacher and he had students in his schools and um, the students were young men in those days and it was traditional for them to have wine with their meals at meal time so um, the problem was that if you've gone to someone and have drunk some of the wine some of the sweet muscatel wine you'll soon realize why the students were a bit greedy and uh, had bigger share than they were supposed to and of course some students missed out so of course they complained to to Pythagoras and um, so Pythagoras thought right yeah we'll fix them up and he invented his cup and we call it Pythagoras's cup so how does the cup work well the cup works in this way it's made up of an inner tube an outer tube and a special air chamber Inside the cup, there is a special marking. And so Pythagoras told his students not to go past the mark. Because if you did, then there were consequences. The mark was just below the inner tube. And so you can fill up your, you can fill up your cup to that point. As long as you fill up to that tube, uh, to that mark, the inner tube is devoid of any liquid. You go past that mark and the cup no longer functions, functions as a normal cup and all the fluid spills out because as soon as the air inside this chamber is pushed out then all of the wine flows out through the inner tube. And so let's have a quick demonstration. There's the cup I will fill it up with water up to the mark. As long as you don't go past the mark, it acts as a normal cup. You can drink from it just in any angle and nothing happens. It just acts like a normal cup as long as you don't breach the spray mark in the cup. If you do breach the mark in the cup, as I'm going to do now, what happens is the wine starts to flow out. Now, this is a little souvenir. In those days, they were big cups made out of clay, and so they were quite heavy, you had to hold them together. People were saying, oh, let's pour the wine in our mouths and stuff. And so what happens is not only does the wine in excess pour out, but actually the whole wine pours out. So obviously, it's not gonna be easy to do this because these are big, huge, heavy cups and similarly putting your fingers underneath you have to hold it and plus there's probably going to be other things under there more tubes and stuff more passages for the wine to pour out uh, fundamentally if you follow Pythagoras' instructions you would drink your cup of wine without any problems if you didn't you'd spill it all over yourself and you'd be in a big mess and you'd be ridiculed for the rest of the day i would imagine in those days and that is the story of Pythagoras' cup. Yeah, woo! Thank you. So guys, if you come closer, you yeah. can have a look. Oh, I get, yeah,